When we requested the best view on the planet, we didn't know this is what they had in mind. My name is Brandon Bargo. And I'm Greg Bargo, and today we're in the Lone Star State. And we, we are, are the High Pointers. pointers. Yeah! My name is Brandon Bargo. My brother Greg and I have been climbing mountains all over the world for years. Our obsession is high pointing. We find the highest natural point wherever we are and do whatever it takes to stand on top of it. Sometimes it's a mountain, other times a molehill, but we've learned the real excitement is found in the journey to get there. So join us as we climb to the top of all 50 U.S. states. We are the High Pointers. Greg, are you ready for the first big adventure? Let's do it. All right, so Greg, today we are visiting the greatest state on the planet. We might be a little biased because it is Texas, because it's where we're from. Born and raised, right? Right. So we're gonna climb Guadalupe Peak National Park. Anytime you do a mountain, it's always changing. Seasons change, precipitation changes. You're the detail guy, as you say. So what do we got? That sounds awesome, man. So let's go through the climbing portion, at least. Trip preparation checklist, so what we like to call the shun list. Shun list, why is it the shun list? Because they all end in shun. <laughs> Okay, you got it. Location, elevation, precipitation, gear identification, and regulation. As far as location goes, it's located in Guadalupe Mountains National Park. The trail is eight and a half miles round trip and has 3,000 feet of elevation gain. Let's go through precipitation. It's a desert environment, it being West Texas, so you don't get a whole lot of rain, but you get a lot of weather variation, so you kind of have to be prepared as far as gear goes. Kind of the final thing is regulation. It is a national park, so there's a entrance fee to get in. It's a pretty small fee. It's like five dollars, Yeah, it's right? like five, five bucks. bucks. Pay your entrance fee, get in there, climb up and down, and that's really about it. That is nice, uh, yeah. So, man, it's gonna be awesome. All right, so here's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna start on the east side of Texas. We're gonna start in Houston. And uh, what I've got in store for us is we have a behind the scenes tour of NASA Johnson Space Center. And here's the sweetest part. We have a guest beyond all guests. We have astronaut Dr. Scott Perzinski, who's gonna be joining us. He is the only person in the world to have climbed to the top of Mount Everest and gone out to space. Impressive guy, That's right? Amazing. amazing guy. And then we're gonna head west to San Antonio. We are gonna go to uh, this really cool, kind of funky vibe, you know, happy place called Mi Tierra Restaurant. And then from San Antonio, we're gonna keep heading west through the mountains, and uh, we're gonna stop off and visit McDonald Observatory. We're gonna check out these huge telescopes. And then from there, we're gonna finish off with the highest point in Texas at Guadalupe Peak. The good thing about having a younger brother is he does all the driving. Road tripping, baby. All right, Greg, so I mentioned to you the guest on this Texas adventure is gonna be Scott Perzinski, and I think it could be a little intimidating to have a guy that's climbed Everest and gone to space. He's got PhDs, he's a doctor. Yeah, just starting to look at his bio, it's yeah. exhausting just reading through it. I mean, this dude yeah. is super impressive. I remember uh, eighth grade, I barely passed algebra. <laughs> Actually, that I didn't pass, I failed it three times. But <laughs> <laughs> You know how they say everything is bigger in Texas. But you know what's bigger than Texas? Space. Scott, hey guys. man, Greg and I have been talking all day about getting to meet a real life astronaut. And I was like, Greg, I have not been this impressed with somebody since we've met. Do you remember this? When we met oh. Puck from Real World Season oh, 3. Oh, I remember. I mean, it was amazing. So, uh, yeah, we wanted to come here, check out NASA, where you're the expert. And then we're going to head west, finish off climbing Guadalupe Peak, hopefully with you, if you'll join us. I'm going to be there. Absolutely. That sounds great. Come on into my office. So come check this out, you'll, you'll be blown away. Wow. So inside here we have a full mock-up of the International Space Station. This Actually, thing is huge. Yeah. So what are some kind of major features of the pool that we're looking at here? Like, just, just treat us like we don't know anything, but we really do, but just, yeah. just you can sure. treat, treat us like we don't know anything. You bet, that'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows yeah. us too well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's 40 feet deep, 102 feet wide, and 202 feet in length. I, it would be kind of cool to see the astronauts too. Is that the best actually, spot from let's, up top? Let's go do it. Okay. Yeah, we, we can do it. So today you were in there six hours, seven yeah. hours? Yeah. So would you say the physical or the mental aspect, or is it both that's the most difficult? At the end, the mental. 
yeah. starts getting to you, right? Yeah, because you know, after the strength goes, the mental part will keep you. Yeah. But that last 35, 40 minutes, especially when they call up and say, hell, you got 30 minutes. That's the longest 30 minutes yeah. on the planet. Yeah. We want to talk to you about your big ordeal. The solar panel? There. Yeah. The airlock where we exit from is, is right down here. The solar panel uh, is way out at the very tip of the space station, um, as far away from the airlock as you can possibly go. And that's where, of course, the problem happened. On this particular spacewalk, I was actually out on a robotic arm, so it actually took about 45 minutes to kind of sweep me around uh, to the very tip of that solar panel to do the repair work. Uh, so that's a bit of a higher risk because it's a longer trip back in if something were to go wrong. So we got neutral buoyancy lab. Where are you taking us next? It's going to be great. We're heading to mission control. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, incredible history, you know, from walking on the moon to walking in space today. So there's a historic mission control, and then there's one that's currently being used. Correct. Right. Uh, we have arrived. This is the actual operational flight control room that's overseeing the crew aboard the International Space Station that's been in orbit for almost 18 years now. Mark. So 24-7, 365, yep. something is happening. For 18 there. years. For 18 years. For 18 years. years. <laughs> so, Scott, there is this partition here. But if there's a red button that I can just like smash my hand down onto and just stuff starts shooting out, in fireworks start In the going. other flight control room, you might be able to get away with that. We'll, we'll take a look. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> a little bit different technology. Oh yeah. The early Gemini flights, all of the Apollo missions, including Apollo 11, took place right here. There's a lot of history. This is actually a National Historic Landmark. I think I read on the website, it said something like, the technology that we have in our phones is more advanced than even here. Oh, absolutely. At Mission Control. So, yeah. it, to me, the, the mind-blowing thing to think about is how did how did we get guys up in a space with technology that just doesn't even compare to today? I still think it's like one of the biggest achievements that we as Americans have been able to accomplish. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. So, Scott, you've shown us around all over NASA. So now we're headed to the mountain, and uh, you're welcome to come with us. Are you up for it? Let's share a mountain. That sounds great. Yeah, look, look forward to it. So you have a couple options. You can jump in the car with us, right? And we've got, uh, I don't know, give or take seven or eight hours, you know? Something like that. So you can go cross country. Or cross state. Yeah. Cross state, yeah. <laughs> or if you'd like, you can choose your own form of transportation. I think I'm going to take the space shuttle. So, <laughs> a little bit uh, faster. Yeah, he'll be there in a two minutes and we'll be there in about eight hours. So, great. Right. Look forward to it. Okay, so next time we see you, be at the mountain. Climb on. So, we're just leaving NASA, uh, hanging out with Dr. Scott Parazinski and him showing us around. I think I've worked up an appetite. Let's go to San Antonio and get some Mexican food. Let's do it. Yeah! Sometimes we call Greg Crazy Chucky. Pretty sure that was just made up on the spot. I'm the uh, funniest person to myself, but in the end it doesn't really matter because I spend a lot of time alone in the mountains, you know? <laughs> With myself and squirrels. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Welcome to Mi Tierra. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brandon. Michael Cortez. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I hear you guys are going to climb uh, the highest point here. The highest in point Texas. in Texas. We figured this is a good kind of stop off point. You know, we're going from East Texas to West Texas and Mi Tierra. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Can you tell us about the history? You know, this uh, restaurant was started by uh, my grandfather, Pedro and Cruz Cortez, because he loved, uh, you know, Guadalajara, loved Mexico. He really wanted to name something after, you know, what he loved. And so he named his restaurant Mi Tierra. And Mi Tierra actually, it, it really translated into my dirt, but it, what it really means is my home and my homeland. So to you, family is important, right? This is a family place. Absolutely. We've got family right here. We are brothers. So every time we go somewhere, it doesn't matter where, we're always looking to compete. You guys probably don't have a food challenge, but I was going to see maybe if you had an idea so I can kind of show Greg what's up. Why yeah. not like a jalapeno like like jalapeno yeah. eating yeah. contest? What do you think? Yeah. Do you I, think you bit off more than you can I, chew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like to win these competitions, yeah. but I don't usually do very well with spicy food. You guys ready? <laughs> I think we're ready. All right. Also, I brought some friends of mine to kind of serenade us while we're doing this little friendly competition. So you eat as many as you can. Stems go in the plate. Okay. At the end of the song, the one with most stems wins. Okay, all right. All right, you guys ready? Okay. Three, two, one. 
I need the smallest one. Okay, you know what? Well, here's the deal. It's a tie. It is although, a tie. <laughs> although, although he does have a half one, half feet. And actually, I got one pulling one in my mouth, <laughs> and I can't breathe. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to give it to Gray. <laughs> He's a winner. As you can tell, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just now leaving me at a restaurant. The food was excellent, and Greg crushed me in the jalapeno eating contest. A little defeating, but now we're on our way to McDonald Observatory. It's a great stop off before Guadalupe Peak, and we're gonna meet our friend Emily there. She has been exploring McDonald Observatory for years, and really that's what this trip is all about. It's about exploring and getting out and adventuring. Hey, hey guys! Hey. How are you guys doing? I haven't give seen us, you. Give, give us a, 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 bargo, a bargo hug. <laughs> good to see you guys. Yeah, it's always a good day yeah. to see Emily. Yeah. Yeah. We're Excellent. super pumped. One thing, great, like we were checking out these telescopes and we're like, man, can we climb up in them yeah. or get around in them? So whatever you let us do, we're going to do. We Let's go do. in and check it out. is the Hobby Everly Telescope. So what's actually going on in here, Emily? It's one of the world's largest optical telescopes. And what it is, is one huge primary mirror. And what we're looking at is 91 mirror segments that are placed together, they rest together, so that they form this one huge mirror that is 11 meters wide. We can use our man lift, okay. um, get as high as possible, yeah. and then look down onto the tracker. So if you're ready, let's suit up and okay. let's go up there. We're getting a behind the scenes tour of McDonald Observatory with Emily. Yeah. And it might get a little bumpy since we're so far out here. Hey <laughs> we're 80 feet up. Emily is shaking the heck out of us up here. <laughs> Green is going to move the tracker here. And this is where you can see all the mechanisms that are moving to make this happen. Wow, look at that. At night, is it moving this quickly, this fast? Yes, it'll move this fast to set up on a target. Uh -huh. Then it moves a lot slower. We have two people here at night, a telescope operator and an astronomer. And so the astronomer is saying, okay, this is where we want to go. This is yeah. the target we're going to look at. But the telescope operator is making sure everything's safe. They're yeah. actually doing the controls. Today has been amazing, getting these views of McDonald Observatory. I mean, these really are the most beautiful views in Texas. You have clear blue skies, beautiful air. So we're heading to Van Horn. It's a great base camp for Guadalupe Peak. We're gonna go to our Hotel El Capitan, and then Guadalupe Peak, the highest point in Texas. Hey guys, Scott, so I wanted to point out that big rock that's jutting out right there, that big face, that's El Capitan. El Cap. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of misleading because when you look at it, that looks like that's the summit. But right behind it is, is Guadalupe Peak, so that's where we're going to be climbing to the summit. That's the Texas high point. Excellent. Got to bag that peak. So if you're ready, let's hit it. Let's do it. And I just kind of want to go over the gear that we would need for this hike. Just a nice, simple day pack is really all you need. You don't need any heavy, huge backpack. And it being a chilly fall morning, you want to have extra layers. Um, one option is 
getting you know a nice rain jacket just in case you get any kind of rain. Today's doesn't look like there will be any. And then another thing is really just kind of having a small first aid kit kind of thing. Just especially if you're with friends out, you know, just make sure you're covered in that area. Water bottles. There's no water going out or coming back just at the trailhead. That's a big deal so on this mountain. We we tend to say like for this mountain specifically like. Four, four liters, liters yeah. and even throwing in maybe an electrolyte I love know, those mix or something like that in the water. Well, boost it, especially the last yeah. bit of the hike. Yeah. Always have plenty of snacks, sunglasses, sunblock. Really, that's all you would really need for this kind of hike. But big things are just snacks, water, some extra layers on with your day pack. And as Greg and I always like to say, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad preparation, right? If you're ready for space, you're probably ready for today. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, guys, right. beginning of an adventure. Greg and I, every time we start a climb and finish a climb, we do it with a high five. Let's do it. OK. Boom. 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 Let's do it. <laughs> I have to show you some of my traditions on top of the yes, mountain. Yes, absolutely. We, we ever, ever done a Popeye? No. Um, I'll teach you a Popeye. OK. okay. Check out this view. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. It's like as far as the eye can see. Yeah. Being in an airplane. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Actually, really, if you really, really, if you look really, really closely, you can see Canada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got a squint. Yeah. This is actually the road we drove in on right there. All right. And uh, I mean, you can see that thing for miles. And then right down below, we've got the parking lot. How high have we you, climbed? Uh, Do you know that? Uh, I haven't looked at the GPS, but we're over a thousand feet of climbing so far. I mean, the really cool thing is this is the Chihuahuan Desert as you look out. I mean, it's, man, I don't know how many hundreds of miles we're looking out upon right here. Can't believe I've lived in Texas for 24 years and this is my first time coming here, but <laughs> well, I have, I'm glad I you have, guys brought me here. I have a thing that if, if you haven't climbed Guadalupe Peak, I've not lived. You're probably not a Texan. You're not really a oh, Texan. Okay, <laughs> okay. That, that too, yeah. High standards, high standards. <laughs> The great thing about Guadalupe Peak is it's always changing. And like through this section here, we've got pine trees and you're just coming in and out of them with these amazing views. And we're getting just up here to the top where the trail gets really exposed and it is awesome. Uh, this mountain's always a little tougher than I expect. Like if you're not in shape to do this, the best way to get in shape is to do lots and lots of stairs and step ups. All right, guys, this is a great stop. Uh, just take packs off, grab some water and food, and uh, man, take a look at all these switchbacks. Outstanding. Like, what an yeah, amazing we, view. Yeah, we covered all that ground. So, Scott, one of our, Greg and our favorite things, like just find, finding out what, you know, motivates people and all the success you've had in space and, and really just all the success you've had in life, how would you say that the outdoors has really transferred and helped you Right. No, I, I'm sure for you guys, too, uh, you know, the outdoors has really shaped me. Um, and I, I hearken it back to my uh, Boy Scout days, actually. So you know, setting goals, whether it's to you know, hike a, a peak or you know, to attain the rank of eagle, which I did, you, know, you have to break it down into manageable piece parts. There are merit badges and then there are ranks and service projects. And it's a long haul and uh, it's easy to get discouraged, but if you can kind of keep your focus on the next step, the next rope length, the next day, the next week of a climb or whatever the goal in your life is, you know, for me it was going to medical school. I really wanted to be a healer and, uh, and then I wanted to you know, become a pilot and fly in space and become a climber and other things. And so, you know, by having a really focused approach, by being resilient, not giving up, not one of the things that I think is really important is not hanging out with people that um, bring you down, that, that you know, don't big, uh, really. support you. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I like that because most of the stories we study are the failures. It's not yeah, always the right. successes that we study. It's yeah. a lot of times it's the failures that we learn from. Exactly. The thing about Guadalupe Peak is it never disappoints. It's always a quad burner. It's, there's no, flats or downs, it's always up, up, up. And uh, it's rocky. It's a little broken. Yeah, it's, it's loose. There's some boulders you're kind of maneuvering through. But overall, it's a good trail. You always have a good view, and the view always changes. And it just always seems to get better as you're moving up.
All right, guys, well, this is a good kind of final rest break before the, the summit push. Cool. And it's actually a pretty good spot. If you look up to the, the right, you can see you've got all these little bumps up in the sky. And what we can see right here is actually not the actual summit, but it's just right around the corner. As, sure as the famous saying goes. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate question I've been right. wanting to ask, and I feel like it's the only question I've been wanting to ask, what is more difficult, summiting Mount Everest, the highest point in the world, or a spacewalk out to the far ends of the International Space Station? Well, I, I guess I would uh, describe both of them as uh, a high pucker factor experience. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're both really um, you know, all encompassing, very nerve wracking kinds of experiences. But um, I guess I would say that you know, physically on Everest, you feel like you're in harm's way every second of every day. It's, it's cold, you know, there's limited oxygen. It's tough to get the five or 6,000 calories a day that you need in your body just to survive. When you're up in space uh, inside the ISS or the shuttle, yeah, it's, it's shirt sleeve weather, uh, you know, all the time, and uh, you know, you're just pushing off with your fingertips and flying like Buzz Lightyear everywhere you want to go. So you don't have the the perceived uh, life threat around you all the time as you do when you're up on a big mountain. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't trade trade either experience for anything in the world. It was awesome. What what gives you more butterflies? What what's more nerve wracking? The moments before a shuttle launch, or is it heading up to the Everest summit? Actually, the, probably the biggest uh, you know, butterfly has been going out on a spacewalk. That, those moments before you open the hatch and you're looking straight down 250 miles at your planet, you know, traveling at 17,500 miles an hour, <laughs> yeah. and that is just, you know, wow. There, yeah. There's no wor you know, words to describe it. Out of that. Yeah. 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 Well, I haven't seen a book by Scott Perzinski yet. If anybody's going to write a book, it's going to be you, the guy that's climbed Everest and gone to space. Well, thanks. You know, I, actually, I'm working on a book. It's, it's actually going to be called The Sky Below, which is kind of appropriate for this place. I mean, you just look around us. We're looking down on you know creation, and it's just, just fantastic. And the other perspectives that I've had from space and even you know scuba diving looking down in the ocean so you know that kind of global perspective so you know it's been inspiring to me and i i've, I've got some cool stories that i want to want to share with people well we'll be some of your first readers yeah. absolutely. all right yeah. cool thank yeah. you thank you well what do you think you ready final push final push let's do it let's head out head out on the way so we're just about to the summit the summit is right up there and right over my left shoulder is El Capitan. So just, oh, I don't know, maybe four and a half hours ago, we were down there looking at El Capitan from the road, and now there it is. It's, it's one of the best shots from the, from the peak. You know, there's 50 high points, but the Texas high point, I think, it, it's got to be one of the top 10. When I get close to a summit, the hairs on top of my head stand up. And then I realize it's lightning. <laughs> Nice. Oh, well, made it, baby. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Hard work yes. paid off, man. Look at this view. Isn't it amazing? Man. We got El Capitan over here, New Mexico around there, and it's just like 360 degree views of everything. Top of the world known as Texas. What do you yeah. think? It took us about four hours. Do you feel like it was, uh, it was worth it? Definitely worth it. Highly recommended. Yeah. yeah. All right. Definitely got to bring the family back here. This is awesome. Well, really, we want to thank you, Scott. I mean, Greg and I, we see each other every day, so. Yeah. We get bored with each other. Yeah. <laughs> so having you come along was uh, amazing for us, and just getting to ask you all kinds of questions about space and Everest. And just, just well, thanks. it's been an awesome day for me, too, hanging out with you guys, uh, and I look forward to maybe hiking with you guys again. Want to well, do a, a special high five up here? Yes, yeah. absolutely. You got something? How about a little uh, rocket sign off? Yeah, I like it. I'm Let's up do for it. it. <laughs> Texas has been amazing. This is our hometown, this is where we're from, and it's a great place to start our, our High Point adventures. Yeah, NASA behind the scenes, went to San Antonio, ate good food, McDonald's Observatory out here in West Texas climbing the highest point. It's been amazing. So 8,749 feet, an amazing summit, but we're off to other summits. So until next time, we're the High Pointers. <laughs>